welcome back to my channel. I am filming another collab video for Vlogmas. I've literally filmed two. This is my third collab video I'm filming for the night. It's getting a little intense. Uh, but I hope you guys are enjoying it because I did try to pick creators to collab with that I haven't collabed with before. So you guys should pretty much see all new people that I'm collabing with, which is amazing. With the exception of maybe one person that I collab with, but we've never collabed just the two of us, so sneaky, sneaky hints there. But today I am collabing with somebody who I found on YouTube and I was so pumped when I found her channel. I'm not sure if you guys recommended her to me or I just randomly found her because sometimes I like sneakily watch like other videos <laughs> of people I'm not subscribed to just to see how I like their content and I love this girl's content. So. For me, when it comes to following people, I like it when you have good quality and I like it when you consistently upload and let me tell you, Ivana checks all of those boxes. So this girl uploads all the time. Her content is amazing. She's so well put together. She honestly reminds me of like a news presenter. I don't actually know what she does in real life. but. If I had to guess, like I feel like she would be a news presenter. So let me know if you watch her channel. Let me know if that's the vibe you get because she is so professional. She's so good at what she does. She deserves like a million more subscribers. So you guys just like get on it, okay? Because I feel like I'm really good at spotting like people that are going to make it big on YouTube. <laughs> just saying. Okay, anyway, thank you so much Ivana for collabing with me. Today the two of us decided to collab on Angie, one of my favorite YouTubers in the whole world, and of course like one of my YouTube besties. Um, she created a tag called the new product tag. I'm a little bit terrified because some of those questions were hard girl, okay? So <laughs> I'm so excited to be collabing with Ivana and also doing this tag video of Angie's. So without further blabbering, Let's get into it. Okay guys, so I do have the questions pulled up. First question, what mainstream release lived up to the hype most this year? Clearly I was prepared. Okay, so the first, I think the first thing that came to mind for me, um, as far as like mainstream releases that definitely lived up to the hype was the Melt, a more eternal collection. That collection was everything. Like I was literally like, ready like I was ready to get my paws on that palette like when they came out with the radioactive palette I was like I was trying to like convince myself to love it but it just it wasn't like it wasn't love at first sight and I'm trying to get better okay where I don't buy everything I see Hmm. So, but then when I saw Amore Eterno, I just like lost my freaking mind and I was like I need those palettes and I need them now and the highlighter of course so yeah, I don't have a long-winded answer, but I'm gonna go with the Melt Holiday Collection. Definitely, definitely lived up to the hype for me. Wonderful formula, easy to blend, wonderful color selection, pair so well together, just, just so many good things about that collection. If you wanna see more, I have a video on it. I will try and remember to link it for you guys to check out. Otherwise, you should be able to find it pretty easily on my channel. The next question, what indie release lived up to the hype most this year? What indie release lived up to the hype the most? So I know Angie said Cleonade, and I would have to agree um, just based off of like, you know how they say like secondhand smoking? I feel like the secondhand effect of seeing everyone's um, picks from the stained glass collection would tell me that that was the most successful launch of 2019. But for me personally, I would have to say the Kaleidos palettes. I think they're so cool. Like they're everything people want this year. Everyone's been into smaller palettes, more curated color schemes. Um, it's just perfect. Great formula, great price point. Like they just like knocked it out of the park for me this year with their palettes and I cannot wait to see if they'll do more small palettes or if they'll do more like their deep sea luster palette like I cannot wait to see what they come up with. Number three, which release did not live up to the hype? I'm gonna have to steal Angie's answer on that one. I'm, I'm pretty sure she said Jaclyn Hill. Is that right? Am I remembering right? I don't know. But for me, it's definitely Jacqueline Hill. I feel like Jacqueline Hill is like one of those people that she's like always a letdown. <laughs> That's so mean to say, but listen, okay? Uh, let me just recap the ways that she has let me down. Champagne Pop, she said it was gonna be limited edition. Sold it, sold it, sold it. 
up and down, up and down, it was not limited edition. Then she did the Champagne Pop collection that had that failed eyeshadow palette in it. Then she came out saying, oh no, um, I was only responsible for one shade. I didn't do any of the other shades. Okay, fine. Then it was the, uh, well, the makeup gave collab that never happened, that was never addressed. Um, then there was the Morphe collab, which, uh, Okay, palette was fine, but do any of you remember people like me that bought the first palette and then she changed the packaging because people were complaining that the original packaging was getting messy? Okay, so that happened. Fine. I wasn't mad about it. Whatever. Then she comes out with the Morphe Vault. I can't remember if there's any other con conspiracies in between there, um, but then she came out. Oh no, she also did the Prosecco Pop thing. Don't know where that came from. Um, money grab. <laughs> um, and then she did the vault. And then there was the, the batch codes. I got the crappy vault. So I used like one palette and then I was like done. Um, <laughs> I just, it's on my Poshmark if any of you want it. Just a little tip. What else did she do? Oh, and then of course. So the vault, all of that disaster. And then she launches lipsticks. And I'm not gonna lie, like, I would have probably, like, I was excited for the idea because I was like, ooh, somebody that's just doing, like, a full spectrum of nudes, I feel like Jaclyn Hill understands undertones, so I was thinking, like, I was expecting for her to do, like, the tan skin girls proud, and then I saw the swatches and I'm like, it's a bunch of pinky nudes, and then maybe, like, two or three shades that would work with darker skin tones, which, fine, like, Jaclyn Hill is not tan, I get it. It's fine, but if you're gonna do like a collection of nudes and say these are all the nudes that you're ever gonna need da -da 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 -da, and do that whole song and dance, like you really need to make sure you have variety of shades, but that wasn't even her biggest problem because she launched it and everybody bought it and then there was the whole fiber debacle and then she like handled it so badly. So I feel like that whole question was designed to get me to say, um, which really is, did not live up to the hype, Jacqueline Hill, <laughs> in my opinion. Okay, so the next question is, what was the biggest curveball of 2019? I think for me, the biggest curveball of 2019 would have to be the Jeffree Star and Shane Dawson collab, because everything Jeffree Star puts out is usually, like, does well, sells out, you can't buy it, blah, 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 blah. Um, but I never watched Shane Dawson, so I never realized, like, the, like, the stardom that he had, and then the two of them collabing, like, created such a powerhouse collaboration because all of Shane's fans that don't even like makeup were now all of a sudden being drawn into the beauty community. So I think that was definitely a curveball because I think I thought, yeah, it was going to be successful, but I never imagined the level of success and just like seeing people unbox them and people like getting in line to meet them. Like the Mall of America is huge. Like I mentioned this in my video yesterday about standout makeup products and how I couldn't believe how many people <laughs> waited in line for hours to meet them. And it's just like the insanity that ensued. I don't think any of us could have imagined. I can't imagine that one million units sold. Like, think about one million people standing in front of you right now. Like, that's a lot of fucking people, okay? Um, there's not even one million people in the state I reside in, I don't think. Actually, I should fact check that. At least in the city I live in. We're like a city of 100,000 people. North Dakota is not well populated because it's cold as fuck here. But anyway, that's beside the point. One million units is a lot of fucking units. And so I think that was a curveball because I think that I don't think any brand has ever launched and sold that much makeup in a, in a day. It really just speaks to how savage all of us are when it comes to makeup. So that's gonna be my final answer for the biggest curveball of 2019. Okay, number five. What was the biggest letdown snooze fest of this year? I really like my answer for this one. Are you guys ready? Are you guys ready? Okay, my answer for this question is the James Charles mini palette. <laughs> What the fuck? Okay, so this is so funny because I remember this moment very vivid vividly. I was in New York City. I went to Samantha March and Kelly Gooch and Ashley Clady and 
there's one other person. Um, they had a meetup at Bryant Park in New York City, and I was meeting them, and it was so much fun, and we had such a good time, and then we were all hungry, and the other girls were going to the Ipsy Creator Night event, and I tagged along, because like I like food, and I like all of those creators, so we went to dinner before they went to the event, and on the walk to the restaurant, um, Angie says, oh, you know they're coming out with a mini James Charles palette? And I'm like, what? No, like what are you talking about? That doesn't even make sense. And she's like, yeah, no, I don't know if she saw like a sneak peek or somebody told her, I don't know. Um, but I just remember being so confused about the fact that there, there was gonna be a mini James Charles palette. And then I think Trend Mood announced it or James Charles came out with his video that same weekend, so I remember being in New York. I think it was that night he, he came out with his video because Angie was with some creators and I was in our hotel room watching his, his reveal video thinking, what the fuck is this? So, yeah. I mean, how tricky is that, right? Like, you're doing the exact same palette in a different size. And I know other brands have done it, but like Juvia's Place is the only one that really comes to mind and they did it because people didn't want as big pans as they were selling and I'm sure they're they're passing on the cost savings which it's the same thing with the James Charles situation but I feel like James Charles also has so many young fans that are easily easily like duped that maybe they thought they would just sell the same product in a smaller size to more people like the same people that bought the first pod I don't I don't know, but I feel like he could have tried, he could have injected a little bit of uniqueness to the palette and done something a little bit different, but who am I to judge? Just a lowly 4K YouTuber here on the platform, so I'm just gonna move on with my life before uh, people come after me. Number six, what was the best holiday release this year? Um, can I just like be sneaky and say the Star Wars collection? Oh my gosh, so listen, my husband is such a Star Wars fan and I got tickets for us to go see it. Um, we're gonna go see it Christmas Eve. Um, he should have gotten opening day tickets, but I guess he was okay with me like being like, let's get $5 tickets. Cause on Tuesdays our movie theater does $5 Tuesdays. So I got us $5 tickets, which pat on the back for that. Um, so. He's really excited to see it, and I, by, you know, association, have seen all of the Star Wars movies, and I've actually really enjoyed the new ones. So, when I found out that Pat McGrath and Star Wars were teaming up, I was like, babe, this is like the perfect storm for the two of us, because he knows how much I love makeup, I know how much he likes Star Wars, and I showed him the collection, and he thought it was really cool. I even made a video where he reacted like he responded to some of you guys' comments on my community tab. Um, that was really fun. A lot of you really enjoyed it. So it was just so fun to see that. And I know it's not out yet. And maybe it'll be the worst thing that Pat McGrath ever released, which I highly doubt because even though she's releasing things left, right, and center, she still kills it every time. Like everybody still loves everything she comes out with. And even though we all fucking complain about how we have to spend 120 something dollars every time she comes out with something, we're all just sheep being led to the slaughter by Pat McGrath. <laughs> I don't know, okay? I like being a sheep, it's fine. I'll buy your palette. So I'm so excited for her Star Wars collab. And I honestly feel like it's like it's like perfect timing. It's the holidays, the last Star Wars movie is coming out. Like, ladies, if you haven't told your husband to get you the Star Wars collection yet, I don't know how to help you, okay? <laughs> That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Sorry guys, I'm like really sassy today. I don't know what's wrong with me. Number seven, this is the last question. What are your predictions for releases during next year? Hmm. Angie, why are you making me do work? Uh, predictions. Obviously, I would say hopefully Multichromes finally makes it into mainstream because I feel like it's time. People keep commenting on my ColourPop post saying, when is ColourPop gonna come out with a Multichrome palette? And I'm like, 
Bish, I don't know, but like, can they stop putting pressed glitter and shit? Um, so I'm thinking multi-chromes are gonna be huge. I have no idea what color story is gonna take off. I felt like green was really the color story for 2019. I know the Pantone color of the year is like a blue. It's called like simple blue or something. It's like a very basic blue, but you know, like, more blue palettes is good too. I think blue is kind of like the 2018 color. So maybe we'll do like a 180 and we'll end up in neutral land again. Who knows? Like, Who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? Uh, I'm really bad at predicting things. Uh, yeah, I feel like everything's been done before. So it's all about like packaging, color story, the person launching the products, like that's really what sells stuff to me. I don't know guys, I have no clue. Those are my, my predictions. Um, Angie has a whole video on her 2020 predictions and she's usually pretty spot on about those. So watch that, watch her tag video. If you are a creator watching this, I tag you. Okay, just do the video. I'm really bad at linking stuff, so I'll probably forget to mention who I wanna do this tag video, so just consider yourself tagged. I love you. And don't forget guys, this is a collab, so please go ahead and check out Ivana. She is so good. She's so profesh, she uploads all the time. Oh, and the other thing about her too is she's not like me. She doesn't buy everything, she curates. She does project pans, like she's awesome. I'm so happy to have found her channel. Also, she's from Minnesota, which I only found out today when we were talking about stuff, which was really funny. <laughs> so I was like, uh, I'm gonna come see you. <laughs> so anyways, I hope you guys are having a wonderful holiday season. Thank you guys so much for spending time with me. I will see you in my next video tomorrow. Bye guys!